Hello, welcome to lesson five here in Mastering Java. We're going to talk a little bit more about arrays, but we're going to learn about the instance variable associated with every array called length. And it's a, a useful thing that we can use for many different purposes. And it kind of illustrates one thing that sets arrays apart in Java from how you may be used to thinking of them if you're a C programmer or coming from another programming language. We all know that arrays are collections of, of like types of data, right? Where we organize it under one name with many different locations. But one difference in Java is that an array is actually implemented as an object in Java. So even though we're using the indices to, to access the elements of the array, it's still implemented as an object. And associated with objects uh, in, in Java are uh, instance variables and sometimes methods and things like that and we've discussed those items when we talked about object-oriented programming in Java. Well I want to talk about a very special instance variable that's very useful. First let's create a uh, array. So let's create an array to hold integer data and I'll say enter JSON and it's going to be a one-dimensional array so I'll just put a single bracket like that and I'm going to open a curly brace up and go ahead and put the data directly in. So four, five, and I'll just kind of put some commas and a bunch of numbers here. Okay. Now, we could certainly count the number of elements here, and we can figure out how many elements are here, but I think your, your eyes will cross trying to count all of these things. And what if we put lots of additional elements in here? What if we put like 55 more or whatever? You, you know, it would be kind of a, a pain to count them all to figure out how many elements are in our array, because as we know, if we try to go past the end of the array and access an element outside of the array, we get problems in Java. So here, uh, we all know that we can, of course, print this out. We can say system.out.println. We can print an element of this array out very easily by just saying, for instance, json0, like that. And so we've done this kind of thing before. We'll go ahead and hit this guy. Let me click this to bring it back down there. And it's telling me that element 0, which is the first element of the array, is 4. And that makes sense. And I can change the number here, and I can print out different elements of this array, of course. Now let me show you uh, something else. So instead of printing out an element of the array, what if I say JSON? Notice I'm not going to put the bracket there. I'm just going to put the name there. Now I'm going to put a period, like we used to do when we were talking about classes and objects, and member variables and member functions. So let me put a period there, and when I put a period there, I get some methods that pop up here, but the one that I'm interested in is the one that just says length here. So I can either click that or I can type it. In this case, I'll just click it or double click it, and you can see that JSON.length is something Java understands. This is what we call a member variable or an instance variable associated with the object that we've created, which happens to be an array. Now this is all happening in the background. When we create this object, Java has set aside enough memory locations to handle everything that we have here. Java knows what the length of this array is because we've specified every element, and of course it counts it up whenever it allocates the memory. And it puts the length of this array, or how many elements, into an instance variable called length, and we can access it by putting the name of the array dot length, right? So when I hit save and then I hit run, there's 19 elements in this array, and if I count them up, I'll get to 19. A better way to prove that to you, though, would be just to probably add a few more. So let's add a few more elements over here. Yeah, this is kind of getting complicated. Lots and lots and lots of elements. I'll hit save and then I'll hit run. Now we have 31 elements in our array. Now you might look at this and say, well, that's nice. I don't like to count things, well, you know, but when would I practically ever need to use that? Well, you're going to find out as you get into programming that arrays are something you use all the time. Usually you set an array up because you're trying to store lots of like-minded data. And you don't usually just store data like that for no reason. Usually you're putting all this data here because you end up needing to access it. You end up needing to reference it. Sometimes you might need to scan through the array and pull out the maximum value or the minimum value. Or maybe you need to figure out how many times the number 56 pops up in my data. So you'll be going through every element all the way to the end of the array searching for things all the time. Now if your array is something that you've created ahead of time and you know how many elements are there, then you know I guess you could just use the length of the array as you put put in all of your loops to, to loop through all of your elements. But in many cases you're Maybe you have a database. Maybe you have a method that adds elements to this array. That's perfectly fine to do. You may not know ahead of time how much um, or how many elements that array has. So in that case, just use the member variable that's provided, the instance variable there, uh, and you don't have to think about it. Another uh, thing that might be nice is to 
uh, use it to terminate a for loop. So for instance, if I'm going to loop through and say i is equal to zero, maybe I just want to uh, print out the contents of this uh, array here. So let me go ahead and take this particular statement out, the length, we know that there's 31 elements there, and I can say integer i equals zero, i is less than or equal to, I could put, I could put less than or equal to 30 if I wanted to, um, and then I could do i plus plus, okay, the reason I've got 30 here is because I know there's 31 elements, so, in, but in Java you don't count from 1 to 31, you count always from 0, so you have to end up stopping at 30, so when you have 30 up here, including the 0, that's actually 31 elements, so you open this guy up, and then you say system.out.println, and then inside of here you just have JSON, open a bracket, and put the loop variable i. Every time you go through this loop, we're printing out on a separate line everything that our array consists of. And we'll go ahead and run that, and you can see that these are all of the elements of our array, 4, 5, 3, 4, 4, 5, 3, 4, over here. Now this is the way you would do it if you were handling it manually, if you knew that there were 31 elements, but what if you don't know ahead of time? What if you didn't count them? You know, what if I just kind of add some more stuff here? And you don't keep track of that. Now you got to get rid of this double comma here, that's not going to make a lot of sense. So I don't know how many uh, elements are in this array right now. That's okay, I just put JSON.length Right? Now you can't do JSON.length, you have to do JSON.length minus one because you're counting from zero. So then when I hit uh, save and then we hit run and notice that the array is perfectly printed out even though I've added elements to it. Now if you forget this minus one there, what do you think is going to happen? You're going to get an error at the end. It's going to say exception. Uh, it's going to say array index out of bounds because when you count from zero all the way up to the length of the array, you're actually counting one past the end. So you always need to kind of make sure to put a minus one there, save that, run it, you don't get any, any exception at the end. So it's a fantastic way of keeping track of the length of your arrays for looping purposes uh, and things of that nature. So make sure you understand how to do that. Go off to the exercise and work that and get some practice with it uh, so that you'll be familiar with how to use that in your programming.